Hey everyone, your Doomsday here, and today we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. So, to start off with, we're going to be talking about the newest leak, and it seems that it's some sort of Christmas present thing. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It can maybe be something to get a special edition skin, or maybe even just some free loot for everyone. But maybe it's even a look at a draw thing, and you can maybe just pick one of these, and it gives you a random prize. And I would really dislike that, since I'm pretty sure my luck is awful. Okay, looking at the next thing. So, in my last vid, it showed that there are some guns that were coming to Vainglory. This could apply to new heroes, such as Ringo or Gwen, and might even be part of the new gun set that was leaked. And this one looks like it's like maybe part of the Gwen, since the gun looks kind of similar, but we'll see how it goes. But if you'd like to see the video on the new gun set that was leaked, and there will be a link to that in the description, and in that we also discuss the top three heroes for each position. So next, it looks like there's a new Saw skin that was also leaked, and it looks kind of like the other Saw skins, but it's just robotic, and it seems that the body armor is green this time. So, up next, now we're going to move on to the topic of choke points. So, we're going to talk about choke points and how to use them to your advantage. So, but however, to actually use choke points to your advantage, you first need to learn what a choke point is, since it's no good if you don't even know what it is. So, a choke point in Vainglory is a narrow area in the Sovereign's Rise, and they're usually located in the jungle, and they make it easier to land skill shots and catch people out for an easy kill, in which certain heroes excel in fighting in. So below, these are some examples of choke points in Vainglory. Notice how all of these choke points are located near the jungle, and they're all narrow spaces where it is very difficult to dodge abilities coming at you. It's important to identify whether your hero will thrive fighting in these choke points, or if it will be bad fighting in these. So to help y'all with this, we made a list of heroes that excel f that fi fighting at choke points, and ones that are bad at fighting in choke points. The reason why choke points are important is because they could decide where you fight in team fights. For example, if your team is bad at fighting in choke points, you want to try and force a fight in the lane, where you have an advantage. But if you're good at fighting in choke points, you want to try and find the jungle where there, are more choke, where there are more choke points. So now we're going to move on to the list of heroes that excel while fighting in choke points. The list goes Baron, Catherine, Celeste, Trinwalker, Flicker, Grace, Jewel, Kensei, Lance, Lorelei, Rhyme, Samuel, Silvernail, Scarf, Vox, and Yates. And we're going to go through each of these heroes and discuss why each of them are good in choke points. To start off with, we have Baron. Baron's perk does splash damage, so whenever you hit one target, it can also damage targets next to it. And in choke points, people are usually in close range of each other, so they're all grouped together, which makes his perk really good at damaging an entire team at once. Also, his A ability mortars and his global ultimate can hit multiple targets, and it's very hard to miss in choke points. Up next, we're moving on to Catherine. With Catherine, it's different because she's a captain. She doesn't do damage in choke points, really. The goal of her is to use her B ability bubble to deflect as much damage as you can back to the enemy by body blocking. Since all your teammates are close together, it's very easy to just stand in front of them and absorb any damage that are just coming straight at them. So what you could do is you could just stand in front of them, use your bubble, and next thing you know, the enemy team is just killing themselves slowly. So now Celeste. Celeste can pop her supernovas, and in choke points, there isn't enough space to dodge them. And the same goes for her B ability stunt and her ultimate. She can easily just use them, and she doesn't even have to be in the choke point to hit them just because of her long range. So next is Churnwalker. Churnwalker has a really easy time to hook several targets, and is less likely to miss a target. Because even if you're aiming for one target and you miss it, there's probably going to be another target right behind it. So I mean, you might as well just throw the chain up and pray, and you're probably going to end up landing it. And he could also pull the enemies all into one spot, making it really easy for some 
crowd control ability to hit multiple targets at once. So now Flicker. Flicker can use his stealth to get into these choke points, and he could slow down the entire enemy team, and the enemy team doesn't have enough space to spread out again, so they're all stuck over there. And her high damage and crowd control make her great for ganking people in choke points. Grace, she can use her B ability, Holy Nova, to stun an entire team of enemies, since her B ability covers up pretty much the entire space of a choke point. Next up, we have Jewel. Jewel is one of the best heroes in finding a choke point, and you always want to do it whenever you're playing Jewel. Pretty much, your big red button, ultimate, it could kill an entire team in a choke point, and we're going to see that later on in this video when we look at real match examples on how choke points are used. So pretty much, his big red button can hit an entire enemy team, and since the hitbox is so big, it can cover up the entire choke point, so the enemy has nowhere to go. And he could also land his A ability and his B ability easily too. Next up we have Kensei. Kensei can hit the entire enemy team with his A ability, with all three of his A ability dash things, whatever you call them. So, pretty much, he could hit all the targets with that, and then his ultimate can stun the entire enemy team, since it can cover the entire length of a choke point, and it could deal with massive damage at him. Up next is Lance. Lance is also one of the best heroes to fight within a choke point, just because he can easily land impales on targets, since the impale covers up the entire length of the choke point again pretty much, and it's really easy for his B ability, since choke points are normally around walls and structures, so he could just go up to somebody and hit an entire enemy team into a wall, and they won't be able to do anything about it, and they'll all just be stunned. So then, we're moving on to Lorelei. Lorelei can use her fish food, or A ability, to hit multiple targets at once and melt them. Her B ability splashdown can also slow an entire enemy team while speeding up her entire team. Even though Rhyme is not a good pick and is rarely used, he can be really really good at fighting in choke points. However, if you take him into lane, he will be nowhere near as effective, because in a choke point, his A ability Winter Spire, Ice Cube thing, whatever it looks like, it can hit an entire front line or a back line and just deal so much damage. And then his ultimate can cover the entire choke point and stun every single enemy in it. Up next, we have Samuel. Samuel, whenever he uses his B ability, Drifting Dark, it makes his A ability, Malice and Verdict, do splash damage. Therefore, he can hit pretty much every single target in a choke point. And also, his ultimate can cover up the entire choke point and put an entire enemy team to sleep, which can change the tides of a team fight really quickly. And then we have Silvernail. Silvernail is again one of the best heroes to fight within a choke point. Just because his stakes, even though they're hard to use, if you use them in a choke point, it can make it pretty much impossible for an enemy team to get to you without crossing the tripwire. So pretty much they have no option but to like pretty much walk into their death if they want to just walk through a tripwire and get slowed. And then his ultimate can just knock them away if they get too close to him. So up next we have Scarf. Scarf can just use his B ability goop and pretty much make it impossible for the enemy to leave a choke point or to come up to him without taking a crap load of damage. So he could either trap him in there or protect himself and then he could use his ultimate to just since they're all going to be standing next to each other his ultimate can hit the entire enemy team and just demolish them so up next one of my favorite ones to use in a choke point is vox just because in a choke point vox can usually get his b ability residence onto every single enemy team onto every single enemy and his basic attacks can destroy them all pretty much and then his ultimate can either silence an entire enemy team and blow them up. And it's really cool because they think they have an advantage and then you just use your ultimate and they're all silenced and get demolished. So last we have Yates. Yates uses his B ability Overwhelm to stun multiple targets that are in close range of each other in a choke point. 
and his ultimate my iron mandate can cover an entire choke point and extra range to damage all the surrounding enemies and he can give all his allies a barrier in it too and it's pretty impossible to miss in a choke point now we're going to look at heroes that are bad in choke points and that you want to avoid fighting with in choke points heroes that are bad in choke points are immobile heroes that are countered with stuns and other heroes that are bad at in choke points are heroes that do not have any abilities that can hit multiple targets out and that can't hit multiple targets at once no matter what so for example we have cruel cruel is countered by crowd control and none of his abilities can hit multiple targets at once so he's so much better in lane or near the jungle where it's not a choke point that way they he can't be stunned as easily by like a lance let's say or rooted by it up next we have ringo Ringo really doesn't get an advantage at all, just because none of his abilities will hit more than one target, and he doesn't have any area of effect damage. Pretty much, by fighting at a choke point, all you do is put yourself at risk for being hit by more uh, abilities, enemy abilities. Up next, for whatever reason, if you do pick Saw, it's a horrible idea, first of all, to pick Saw, and it's an even worse idea to pick Saw and fight in a choke point. You're pretty much asking to lose the game at that point. Because pretty much, it's easy, really easy for the enemy to hit skill shots and stuns in a choke point. And since Saw is a really immobile target, he could just be melted super quickly in a choke point. That's why if you want to fight with him, it's so much better in lane. Up next, we have Taka. Taka relies on his stealth and open space to go for hidden runs. So pretty much, he goes in, uses all of his abilities, and then runs away. But in a choke point, there aren't many ways which you could really run away, and it's super easy to predict which way you're going to go and to stun you up. Therefore, it's so much better in lane, because you could use your abilities and then you can run in any open direction, since lane is just open direction. Okay, so, looking at this Lorelei clip, I saw that Inara and Lyra had just took top turret, and now we're going to try and go and see if our CP buff is still up. And with the vision next to a shop, we're able to see that they're rotating down to us. So me and Finn position ourselves in a choke point, and our plan was to first pull them into their choke point, where they are right now in this picture. And then Finn uses his stun right away, since they're in a choke point, and they're unable to dodge it just because they don't have enough space to dodge. And then right after Finn's stun lands... Um, I use my fish food to stun them again, and then they're perma-stunned for such a long time, and by that time, they're all melted, pretty much, and they have no health left now. And then from there, it's just an easy chase down, even though I missed my fish food over there. I still am able to get the kill, and with this final fish food, predicting where Inara is going to go, we're able to clean him up and get the victory. So in this Fox gameplay, we're against a Black Vernor and a Reza, and the Reza comes out of the bush to try and gank me. And I, and I know the only way that I could beat them in a team fight, since they're both counters to Vox, is in a choke point. So what we do is, I kite back to a choke point, and I, right when we're in the silence, I use my ultimate, since I know that there's no way they could dodge it with no space to go anywhere. So I guarantee that I hit my silence on both of them. And then, since they're both silenced, they can't do anything, and they can't run away. So then Lance comes in, and he's able to land an impale on both of them. And from there, even though I'm Atlas, it's just an easy cleanup. Okay, so, in this first team fight, I saw that Yates was first split from him, and he was in bottom lane. And I knew he didn't have his ultimate already, because he already used it in the last team fight. So I tried to engage... But because of poor communication, I just get blown up. But keep an eye on Jewel in this fight, and let's look at this picture for a little bit. Notice how Jewel positions and uses his ultimate. He's far away from the enemies, so they can't damage him. And he uses ultimate where the enemies were standing right in a choke point. The enemies are unable to move up because of the ghost wing pit, and they can't move down because of the wall. So they're just stuck there. And they just have to sit there and take an entire Jewel ult to the face. Which is why Jewel is one of the best heroes to fight within a choke point. To sum it all up, in any match, you want to make sure that you look at both compositions for each team. 
and see what heroes each team has. Then you could use that to decide which team has the advantage in fighting in choke points. This is a really underrated thing that many pro teams even overlook about whether they should fight in choke points or in lane, and many people just ignore this and just fight wherever, which is a bad idea. So if you have the advantage in choke points, you want to try and force fights in the jungle where more choke points are located, but if you do not have an advantage in choke points, you want to make sure to try to fight in the lane where there are less choke points. So that's going to be it for this video, and thanks for watching my 3.9 leaks and sneak peeks video, and make sure to 